All right, I'm, it's, it's time to uh, strike the torches. Uh, but before that, we've got to set our torch pressure, the actual pressure leaving the regulator and come to the torches. We've performed our uh, entire leak check on the heating unit, and now we're going to set the pressure coming to our torches. So in order to set pressure, we always want to make sure our valves are all the way open, which we had them open earlier, but they're closed because we performed the leak check. So we're going to open the oxygen all the way, standing to the side, away from this set screw. Open the, uh, the gas very slowly, turning no more than a turn and a half. Back your set screws completely out because we're going to be setting our pressures and we want to start at ground zero. Now, I'm going to crack my oxygen. Open, just crack it. Run your set screw in. And I'm going to acquire about 8, eight to 10 PSI for this process while it's flowing. You don't ever want to do it when you're not flowing because if you set your pressures and your valves are closed, the pressure will build up and the needle, the needle will rise on the gauges, but as soon as you open the valve and start to do the process, the pressure that you need actually will fall and you'll no longer have the pressures necessary uh, to complete this process. I'm going to do the same thing on the fuel gas. I'm going to crack the valve. Run my set screw in. Acquire the same pressure as I had on oxygen. And then close it. Now I know that I've got the pressures necessary to perform my operations. Now these pressures will differentiate, obviously, with the thicker metal that you do. Thicker pipe, larger mass, uh, requires a lot more heat. So what I'm doing quarter inch, six, seven, eight PSI may not be enough. You may have to go nine, ten PSI. Uh, it's just going to differentiate and that's something you're going to have to fill out in the field and that happens by experience. So I'm going to step over here to where I have a uh, prefab table built uh, which, which is doing nothing more than holding a piece of the quarter inch flat steel and I've got it locked down on here, my piece is off to the side, so I have free passage to lay my root. If I have the metal laying on another piece of metal and I go to lay my root, I'll actually weld the metal to the metal plate here and I won't be able to get the metal loose. Plus I won't be able to get the penetration that's necessary. So I set them off to the side to do my root tacks and then uh, we'll do the entire route and go over and do our cover pass. Now it is possible to do a one pass route and cover combination, but I would need a much larger rod. Now that brings to my attention what type of rod we're using. Now there's a special rod that's got to be used for doing this carbon steel flat plate or steel in general. These rods we've ordered in is an RG60. Uh, the 60 stands for 60,000 pounds per square inch tensile strength. And the RG, I'm not sure what the connotation is, but it is for, uh, for carbon steel. So we'll begin the process.